good YouTube? It's your girl, Bothina One, bringing you guys in another YouTube video. And today I want to talk about a topic that I feel like has been, you know, a lot of stuff has been brought up regarding millennials, um, just because due to the pandemic and how it's affecting people that are, you know, like in their early 20s and up or so, like 30s-ish. And a big question that a lot of, I think, like people that are older, like the baby boomers is, you know, why are millennials staying at home longer? And especially like how this pandemic is affecting millennials to even progress or move forward, um, you know, to the next stage in their life. And I mean, it's a simple, it's a, it's a really simple, I feel like response. And I think that's what we're seeing now with this pandemic, with the whole people's wages are slowly going up. People are actually starting to make a little bit more than what they call minimum wage, which in all reality, minimum wage was never really a minimum wage. It was never a livable wage to begin with. And so a lot of time people always ask, well, why is it that, you know, millennials are staying home so much longer? And the real question or response to that is that a lot of things have inflated so much for people like in my age group, millennials, and cost of living has went up, gas has went up, you know, food has went up, but people's hourly wages have not went up. Then the other thing you have is that a lot of people are going to college where they're coming out owing a, ho a home before they even get into their profession, but then they're coming out owing over 100K worth of student loan debt, but then you go and you apply for a job, the job barely pays you 30K a year. It doesn't even pay you necessarily like really a livable wage to even move out. And then you got rent that's like $1,000. So even if you move in with a roommate, it still may be hard for you. Um, because a lot of folks, when they come out of school, like people sometimes have to commute a decent distance. So that forces them to be able to like have to go out and get a car note. So now they got a car note. They got oil changes. They got car repairs. They got gas. They got whatever other expenses that they have so it's like a domino effect like i always feel like baby boomers always try to say well why are millennials staying at home so long why are you guys not as uh, aggressive as we were and stuff i also feel like it's a mindset like i feel like with baby boomers their whole mindset was like you go work a job and you work there for 40 50 years and you stick with that one job, get promoted, climb the corporate ladder. Where I feel like the new generations or the millennials tend to look at, you know, you work a job and you use that money from that job to then start your business or start your craft or career or something that it is that you're really passionate about. Um, and I think that's the biggest difference or differentiate um, between generations is that, like I said, the baby boomers, they look at like, hey, you know, you work a job, you, you work the corporate ladder, it has good benefits, has good vacation time, whatever the case is, and you stick with that one spot for the pretty much the rest of your life until you retire, hoping that at the end, there's this big holy grail that, you know, at the end, you'll have a big pension, a big 401k, you know, hopefully you'll even be alive, hopefully that you'll have, um, money saved up, your house is paid off, your kids are through college. That's considered the American dream, I would say, for a lot of baby boomers, where millennials, you know, I think that that's a big factor as well. But back to the whole point of why, why a lot of us are living at home a lot longer is mainly because a lot of us just didn't have the same opportunities. Like the reason why a lot of us are having to pay more in college debt versus baby boomers is that they didn't pay back their school debt. You know, they would take out, so like before there wasn't this thing called the parent plus loan where like now your parents in a sense are trapped to pay back student loans along with the kids because the kids in the generation before weren't paying it back. So now they're like, okay, hey, we're going to get your parents now to pay back those student loans. So now it's more likely that it'll actually get paid back. So in a sense, the parents are being trapped right along with the kids, if not even more, because the parents are the ones who take out the bigger portion. Um, in some ways, it's good. In some ways, it's bad because if your parents don't have good credit score, then they can't really take out those large lump sum amounts that are needed for nowadays for kids to go to school. So like I said before, that's the biggest reason why I believe a lot of time people are not able to move out as soon or as quick as the generation before. Uh, college debt is crazy, is bigger, the amounts are bigger. Um, cost of living has went up and people are not able to, the salaries haven't went up with, inflation has went up crazy, like over 10 times, but people's salaries have not moved. Like you look at minimum wage, minimum wage has been the same for the past like decade or so. Um, and that's an issue. So all those different factors determine why a lot of time people can't move out as well as what they don't tell you about is a lot of baby boomers are working a lot longer past their retirement age. So meaning that there's more people in the same positions and less openings for the new generation to come in and work their way, I guess you could say up the corporate ladder, 
as well. So there's a lot of different factors um, that go into why people have not been able to move out. And then at the same time too, you know, it's just, like I said, the cost of living. So every year something keeps going up. Like we look at the pandemic, due to the pandemic, gas has went up, right? So gas is now getting close to $4, at least where I live in the city of Illinois. Um, housing is going up, you know, everything is getting ready to go up more. So let's say you got that 3.5% raise or 5% raise, or whatever. Well, now that raise kind of just puts you back at normal level because everything else is going up so it kind of goes back to what i said yet again inflation everything else is inflating but people's salaries and hourly wages are not let me know you guys thoughts about this down below in the comment section if you enjoyed the video be sure to drop a like comment share and subscribe hope you guys have a good rest of your day and i'll chat with you later peace Finn army. army